Hey -o. my name is Binny Shadow, and welcome to my playthrough of Core Keeper. I have only played this game a little bit in the past, and I now intend to see what the game has in store for us. Diving on in, I'll set the world name to 100% in spirit of the playthrough. I'll put the save icon to an ocarina, as I hope we encounter one as our instrument. Game mode will be set to hard. We'll be using a standard character type. With that all done, our character is customized, named, and now we can get started with the shenanigans. In a place far away from anywhere else. You are part of a group of explorers, making your way through the forest. Feeling a strange presence, you notice something between the trees. Drawn to it, you approach this strange relic and raise a hand towards it. Upon touching its surface, a blinding light engulfs you. After the bright light, I seem to have been teleported to some strange area. Confused and not knowing what to do, I decided to explore. I gathered our first ingredient being some wood and crafted it into some torches. I then decided to gather all of the wood in the immediate area and light up the place as we go. I found our first root seed here. You can place this in the ground and it will sprout roots in all direction. Good source of wood. We'll be using that in the future. Some orange mushrooms were hiding over here in the corner. Grabbed those as well. I proceeded to try and clean up the place by gathering the rest of the wood and the mushrooms. These statues were looking at me pretty menacingly, so I decided to check them out. It seems like they hold a gem slot. Malugaz the Corrupted. Pretty cool. Looks like bosses. Glurch the Abominous Mass. Can't wait to meet that guy. With the last of the wood gathered, I checked out the other crystal. Gorm the Devourer. Sounds like a fun time. Stared off at the shinies that I can't get a hold of at the moment. I then crafted our first basic workbench and chest. I placed our second torch of many to make a bit of light and slapped our basic workbench down. And as you can see, there's a plenty to choose from. We decided to go with none of those and immediately <laughs> crafted ourselves a pickaxe, cleared off our hotbar, and uh, put another tool on there, the wooden shovel. I plopped down our first chest and put away a few things we may not need. Well, actually, it was just one thing, the root seed, as we take these mushrooms back. We're going to eat those later. As you can see, our food is at 61 out of 100. We're getting, we're starting to get on the verge of being hungry. Back in the basic workbench, I decided to look at the options under gear. We have a wooden hoe and sword and some armor. I decided to craft some of that. Thank you. I added a wooden hoe to our collection of tools and eyeballed the watering can, one of our first goals. Looking at the stats that our wooden armor gave us, as we have like 11 armor and 16 health. Not the greatest, but it's better than nothing. It's a good start. I then went on one of my first torch placing sprees. It was getting a little dark in our first area. Ooh, a level up, a running point. Let's, uh, let's open up the skills and check that out. What did we get? A 0.1% movement speed for our running troubles? Fantastic! I placed our last torch and had to craft more, one of many crafting sessions, and a crafting point to follow. With the beginning area finally lit up and some tools under our belt, I uh, sat here and wondered, what do we do next? What's the goal? What's the plan? After thinking long and hard, I decided, I need room for a farming enterprise. We need food. We need lots of resources. We need space. And I have a pickaxe in hand. Let's make a tunnel and fill it with crops. So I started. This seemed like a good as place as any to start, especially since it gets us closer to the shinies. What could they be? Before we get to the shinies, apparently I wanted to even out our tunnel a little bit, so I did. Tunnel maintenance. It will be a, uh, a reoccurring theme here coming to follow. We got ourselves a mining point as well, and I think I'll expand this one more tile. With the start of our tunnel forming, I decided to square out the base just to make it a bit more tidy. 
There we go, that looks a bit more clean, and uh, I think I'll leave the other side for another day. Let's throw another torch down for some light. I expanded the wall a tiny bit further to expose our shinies a bit more. And finally head on in to dig them up. Copper. Nice, we need some of those for the watering can. Good start. I'll gather the rest of these. While gathering the copper, I noticed a light off in the distance. I think we'll check that out later. After mining the four copper ore that we need to for, to make the bars, I decided against it for the moment because we didn't really have any seeds to plant anyway. So I went back to mining. Or I attempted to anyway, but it, upon a, <laughs> our pickaxe broke immediately upon trying. So back to base it was. How do I... Hmm. Yeah, there's a salvage and repair station, but it requires five wood and five copper ore. As we only had four copper ore, I decided it was cheaper to just make a new pickaxe instead and throw this one away. Nice. With a fresh pickaxe in hand, I gathered the rest of the ore, and we were getting closer and closer towards that light. After gathering the last of the copper ore, my curiosity got the best of me. What is over there? I wanted to go explore. So back to base it was to craft ourselves a weapon, a wooden sword. I put away a few things just in case we died, and headed back out. I still had to dig my way over, but thankfully it wasn't too far. And we successfully broke into a cave system. What's over here? Our first waddly mushroom charged at us and bonked its head into a wall. So we bonked him back with our wooden sword, dealing about 30-ish damage per hit. It dropped some scrap parts and we'll be using that to repair our equipment. Going a bit further, we can see a grassy area with some trees and water. I think we'll explore that in a bit. Breaking some crates, we find some tin ore. Nice. I don't even think we can mine that yet, but we have some. We also found a crude bomb, does 260 to 270 ish damage. After gathering some of the wood and mushrooms in the area, I couldn't resist the urge to use the bomb to blow our way into the area next to us. Success! We have blown our way into the other area. I placed down a torch and broke this big crate, which dropped an ancient gemstone and a peasant hat. The gemstone is em emitting waves of energy, and the peasant hat gives us some dodge chance. I think we'll equip uh, or keep our uh, our health, though. I continued breaking some of the crates in the original area and found a Tome of Dark and some fiber. The Tome of Dark summons a ranged bat. That sounds very useful. So we threw it on the hotbar, and uh, I think we'll use this guy <laughs> in some combat. Continuing our crate-breaking rampage, we found some pet pellet. And uh, this will give what I pet 50 experience. Unfortunately, we don't have a pet yet. So, placing another torch, we continue gathering some resources. And yet again, we see another light off in the distance. Just begging to go be explored, but we resist the urge and return home. I wanted to create a wooden door to block off our entrance, but it required two copper bars, and we haven't even made our watering can yet, so I decided to, uh, yeah, I settled with just a, a wall instead, a dirt wall. Fantastic. After that tiny bit of exploring, we had a bunch of new uh, material, so I threw them all in our chest. I crafted our furnace, threw it right down beside the chest, and started smelting our copper ore. It seemed like it was going to take a while to process, so that gives us time to expand our tunnel. So we got back to digging. Before we could even start, we heard it. What was that? We'll have to go explore that at some point, but in the meantime, we continue digging. We immediately broke into a tiny bit of a cave system. In here, we could hear it a lot more clearly, too. The, the thumping or the jumping or pounding. Back to the tunnel it was, though, to continue the expansion. I received a new talent point in mining, which I placed in efficient excavation for 2% more mining damage. With that, our mining damage was up to 41. How high could we make that number go? I don't know. Let's continue back to digging. I had to do another good old torch crafting session. Finished lighting off the area and caught the tunnel up with the end of the cave. 
I encountered some more shinies in the walls being copper ore. This is fantastic, as we need more of this resource to craft materials. <laughs> that being said, our pickaxe broke. I didn't realize at the time, but thankfully my character did. I'm quite, I was getting quite hungry. But I pushed on as I wanted to get some more mining done. We broke into a tiny little opening, and we were getting quite close to the grassy tree water area we seen earlier. My character insisted that they were quite hungry once more. This time I seen it and headed back off to base to do something about it. I checked to see if our copper was done, which it was, entered the craft bench and made ourselves a cooking pot, put it down beside the furnace and threw our mushrooms inside. This would make mushy mushroom soup our early game food source. After filling our belly and uh, being happy about it, I decided it was time to craft our watering can. We still didn't have any seeds though. Using our hoe, we tilled some soil and threw down a root seed to have a continuous source to fuel out our growing torch placing needs. With our hunger situation taken care of, we went back to the mine, made an entrance into this neat little area and got ourselves a mining level. I decided to finally explore the area a little bit, smash the boxes to see what they would have, a heartberry seed, and an old amulet. Old amulet seems to be a valuable we can sell, but the heartberry seed is something we can plant and grow. Nice! The back room held a wash basin and a few more crates. We got ourselves another seed, a bomb pepper seed. While heading over to the water to fill up our watering can, we got ourselves a talent point in running. I gathered the nearby glow tulips and got ourselves another seed. I placed our running point into endurance runner, which reduces our food drain while running by 5%. I smashed this large box and it gave us quite the gift, a swift feather. I can't believe we found one of these, but look at that. This allows us to dash in any direction. Such a useful accessory. With this equipped, we can press spacebar holding any direction and we'll just, we'll have a short dash. This will be very useful for enemies and bosses to come. I seem to have missed a few pieces of wood in a crate in this area. And look at this Waterloo boy. He didn't even make it to us. <laughs> but with our new trinket, look at that. We can just dash. We just go, oh, you're going to hit us? Nope, never mind. Whoop. Too quick, too fast. <laughs> we'll sit there. We'll bonk you. Look at this. Whoop. Nope. Can't hit us. After a couple more hits, he goes down and drops us a seed. What a nice guy. I returned back to base and put our copper up to smell and cleaned up the inventory. I put the wash basin over here as this is where our farming is going to be and we're going to be replenishing our watering can there quite often. Digging up the stone tiles and replacing them with some dirt as that's just more farming space. Our farming enterprise starts here. With some of the land tilled prepared for our future seeds, I realized I forgot to water our other seed. <laughs> We're off to a good start. I also planted the seeds we picked up from our exploring earlier. Remember to water them this time to make sure they grew and placed a couple more torches to light up the area. Our copper ore was done and I did a bit more inventory maintenance. I crafted a second chest as our first one was getting a bit full. I used our freshly smelted copper ore and made a copper workbench. This gives us access to a bunch more things. I replaced it with our basic workbench. Thankfully, we can toggle to any of the older workbenches still. I ogled the new copper tools as they had much more digging or gathering damage than mine. Yeah, the copper pickaxe does 42, and my wood does 15. The copper hoe also covers a 2x2 two two area, instead of my wooden one, which only does one. There is a belt pocket, which gives us 5 more inventory slots and a fishing rod. Also a small lantern, gives plus 3 glow. There is also a bunch more crafting stations, which I did not have the copper for. It appears our next workbench is tin, and we only have a couple pieces of tin that we got from some crates. Haven't found those in the walls yet, but I decided to craft ourselves a copper pickaxe. This will speed up our mining tremendously. 
I realized I was one copper bar short from the salvage station, and that's unfortunate, but we deposited our items and got back to mining. We got a running level on our way back, and our copper pickaxe proves to be quite, <laughs> quite useful. Look at how much quicker we are able to break these dirt blocks. Our wooden pickaxe took four hits to break one of these, while our copper is only taking two. I was starting to feel like a powerful miner, and our growing torch-placing addiction is only getting stronger. As our tunnel grew, the thumping was still keeping us company. After cleaning up a lot of the torches to be spread out to each, I got another talent point in mining. That will be another 2% in our damage. After expanding our tunnel a bit, I decided to return to that second shiny off in the distance, and I wanted to go explore that. Breaking into the new cave system, I was immediately assaulted by a wobbly boy, which we quickly dispatched of. I gathered some more copper in the walls, seen some more light off into the distance, and gathered this glow tulip. Heading deeper into the cave, I discovered quite the scene. It looked like a bunch of this heartberry fruit was gathered around a golden... a golden one. I harvested it all and hoped for some more seeds, and investigated the middle one, which indeed appeared to be a golden heart fruit. I went down into this corner to place a torch and discovered there were some more things out there. My curiosity got the best of me, so I decided to explore. And there was another waddly boy waiting for us inside. After quickly taking care of the mushroom, I found our first digging spot. Digging it up, found ourselves a broken core idol. Seems to be another valuable we can sell in the future. I gathered our glow tulip in hopes for another seed, which we didn't get. Gathered some more copper in the wall. When we were met with quite the surprise, flashing red blocks which exploded. Was our copper okay? Let's go check it out. Those exploding blocks left quite the hole in their wake, which I was okay with as we got to gather a whole bunch of supplies. It almost blew a hole directly into our base. We couldn't have this, so I decided to fill it up. After finish patching up that hole, I discovered there was another one, really close to our base. I filled this one up too. There is really no reason to fill these up, but you know what? It made me feel good. I checked out the other side of the destruction and gathered our couple blocks. And this is when catastrophe struck. I was getting quite low on wood and our torches as well. I couldn't fuel our torch placing frenzy, so I desperately sought out for some wood and thankfully I had seen some off in the distance. We mined towards it. While getting closer there were some more shinies and a chest. Oh, there's the blue shinies. What is this? The blue shinies turned into ancient gemstones. Very nice. After gathering those, I broke into the cave system and made our way towards the chest. To my benefit, it was actually encased in wooden walls, which I dug up because we could actually just use these for our own house. The back walls were actually a different one. They were a paintable wall, and I grabbed the torches and carpet to follow. After putting the whole room in my pocket, I checked out the chest, and it only had another valuable inside. So I gathered the chest and the tile under it. It only seemed fitting that I took our tor torch as well, and it, it appeared that the room itself was the treasure all along. I headed back to the cave, took care of another mushroom, and started gathering wood and breaking grates. Our inventory was looking pretty full, I might return back to base here soon, but I ended up finding another a mechanical part, which took up another spot in our inventory. Yep, our inventory was officially full, and there was stuff being left on the ground. As a temporary solution, as I still wanted to continue exploring, I threw down a chest to safely, kind of safely, store some of our materials so I can continue exploring. With some freed up space, I continue gathering our wood and a couple items that were dropped, a wood crossbow and a witch doctor hat. This crossbow was our first ranged weapon, and it did 40 plus damage. This was great news for us, as we had access to ranged combat. We no longer had to rely on melee. We found this lonely bomb pepper over here, hiding in the corner. 
And then I stumbled upon a giant mushroom. Look at the size of this thing. It's bigger than me. After harvesting it, I discovered I could eat this thing for 25 max health, but only once. Which I immediately did, as max health is quite beneficial. With 141 health as our new max, I continued gathering the nearby area. I needed just about everything nearby. Mushrooms for more food, wood for more torches, and copper for more tools. Just when I thought I was gathering the last of the materials in this area, it appears that it broke into a whole new cave system, with another shiny off in the distance. With the irresistible urge to explore, I had to peek my head in, especially since there was a new enemy over there. After continuously dodging the silly goose, we took care of him and decided to go poke whatever this new thing was. The crates appear to be blocking his line of sight, so I think we gotta break those to open it up. For some reason, I decided to gather this uh, copper ore before continuing, which led to a quick torch crafting session. And the last of the copper was in hand. After breaking this crate, he really wasn't happy and actually attacked and broke a couple himself. It appears after he charges, he will lose his stone effect for a few moments while dazed and then regrow his armor and try and attack you once more. I ended up getting a whole melee level off of this guy, but we eventually take him down and he dropped quite a few mushrooms. These crates were proving to drop very useful items and we still needed plenty more mushrooms and wood, so I couldn't help but gather all everything. However, our inventory did end up filling up once more. In an attempt to free up at least some inventory space, I seen this Witch Doctor helmet actually gave us quite a bit of an upgrade. It allows us to summon two bats, which I think I would take advantage of. I then dug off into the walls to gather some more copper, explored a bit deeper into the cave, and we got to see the bats attack something for the first time as they, yeah, they stay at range and they attack with a little projectile. They do about 30 plus points of damage, and you know what? That is just additional damage for summoning a couple extra minions. I think that's pretty fantastic. With our goal to obtain some wood being met, it was time to return home, back to base. I couldn't really take anything from the chest we placed earlier, so I decided to leave it there and grab the stuff later. On the way back, we got another running talent point, which we happily put for 5% less food drain. Upon arriving just outside of our base, I decided to make this entranceway look a tiny bit better. Not the greatest, but at least it looks a bit more even. It appears our root seed has grown a tiny bit and our garden is actually ready for its first harvest. I crafted a few more chests and hoped to try and get the growing amount of items and resources un under wraps, but, uh, you know, placing more chests just led to our base looking even more messy. You know, it's not the greatest setup, but it is functional. I did, however, want a bit more space, so I picked up our workbench temporarily and placed it a couple of chests back here for weapons and armor. The two chests down here beside the wash basin and our farm are going to be used for our farming materials. I replaced our copper workbench in front of the wash basin and finished sorting the rest of our supplies. I was kind of shocked to see we have five tin ore already without actually mining any. I started the smelting process for the 40 copper ore that we had gathered. Maybe we should have started this sooner. I then harvested our first crops. I didn't get very many seeds back from our harvest, however, we did find plenty from exploring. After tidying up our storage, I decided to plant our seeds. Which, to my surprise, I quickly ran out of space and had to expand our farm. With all the crops planted, I got to watering. My watering can was empty, and so was my belly. I figured it was time to make some more food. After finishing up in the farm, I headed off over to our cooking pot to cook our newly farmed materials. Grabbing our previous cooked mushy mushroom soup, I put in some heart berries and mushrooms. This will give us a very useful early game food. 
Partially filling our belly with the mushy mushroom soup, I awaited for our new found food to be finished. Mushy berry pudding. It gives us 25 max health for 10 minutes. That'll be very useful for us. When eating it, it puts us up to 177 health. Nice. Our little tree farm was getting out of hand, so I decided to give it a little trim. I then immediately used that wood for another torch crafting session. Oh, and a crafting point. What do we get for this? Apparently leveling crafting gives us armor percent, but we can put our point into 6% chance to gain an extra item when making any wall, floor, bridge, or fence. That will be useful over time. I grabbed some of the copper ore out of the smelter and headed over to the crafting table to craft the rest of our tools. I made our shovel and hoe and decided it was time to finally make ourselves an upgraded backpack. I also crafted our copper anvil. We haven't encountered an egg yet, but in order to get a pet, we would need to hatch one through the egg incubator. And in order to make that, we need glass. So I made ourselves the glass smelter. I finally crafted the salvage and repair station, put away our old tools, and threw on our new backpack, our belt pocket. It gives us five health, or six, it gives us some health, and uh, five more inventory slots which will allow us to carry more things while we're exploring. Our food was finished, so I picked that up as well for a cooking point. I couldn't quite decide where I wanted to place another workbench, but I decided to embrace the madness and <laughs> throw these down in this empty spot beside our chests. What is this chaos we're building? <laughs> this is I need to, I need to build it. I, this needs to get organized at some point. Checking out the anvil, you can see we can craft uh, a wood bow. Thankfully, we already have a crossbow that does more damage per hit than this. However, this does attack faster, so it may have higher DPS. I'm not quite sure on that one. But we can also craft some copper armor, which would be an upgrade over our wooden armor, as well as a copper sword. There's also some rubber gear that reduces the impact of being slowed from slime. We haven't encountered slime yet, but curious indeed. There's also a wooden shield, which pr gives us plus six armor and allows us to reduce incoming damage by 70%. That could be quite useful. I decided to craft the copper sword. I thought about crafting the copper armor as well, but we were running quite low on copper ore, and I wanted to keep some on hand for repairs. Now that we did have access to a salvage and repair station, I could grab our old gear or duplicates and break it down for base materials, which I could then use for other things. Fantastic, I love this kind of stuff. Throwing everything that we could and hitting the button, we got three wood, seven scrap parts, and two fiber. That's some. That's a lot of stuff early in the game. Breaking down our other summoning book, we got two more fiber and four more scrap parts. This was very good, as we could then immediately use some of the scrap parts to reinforce our pickaxe, giving it more durability and more mining damage. I also reinforced our wooden crossbow, giving it 7 more damage per hit. Our tree said hello by growing in the only possible way that would get in our way, and we headed back out to grab some sand. I wanted to get some glass processing so that we can get our incubator started. In search of more sand, I stumbled upon our old chest and finally grabbed our things. The incubator requires 8 glass, and we ended up gathering a healthy 17. So I threw it in, and it began processing. I crafted another chest and put it beside our weapons and armor. This is going to be for any miscellaneous items or building, like the uh, walls and carpets and stuff. However, I am a silly goose, and I forgot I just gathered a chest from our old stuff, so I just put it down just to get it out of our inventory. We'll probably use that later. Excited to try out our new upgrades, I headed back out to where we finished exploring before. Arriving back, I picked up some fungal soil just laying around. Mushrooms will, gl will grow on these if you place them. And got ourselves into a little bit of combat, easily disposed of. Pushing back the darkness, we encounter another one of those large, stoned mushrooms. Upon noticing my presence, he immediately greets me with a friendly hello. I proceeded to say hi back by slashing him in the side. With our new copper sword, we were almost able to take him out in just two charges. 
He was also kind enough to drop us a new potion. A stone skin potion. What does this do? Plus 34 armor for one minute. That could be very useful against a boss. Heading a little further down, we encounter some more mushrooms and wood. Both of these were great to see as they were both in high demand. I always like smashing these crates whenever I can because they usually drop good resources. Hey, where was all this sand a little earlier? <laughs> well, I can always uh, gather some more for a second incubator. And I'll grab the shiny while I'm here. After harvesting these crops, I noticed that uh, this was just a little bit of a circle, and it takes us back to where we were. I remembered there was another shiny uh, glowing tulip off in the distance, and I wanted to go check that out next. Choosing an entry point, I started digging on over. And for some reason, we obtained our first piece of iron ore. Very interesting. Where did we just land? I also noticed there was gold around. What? What is this place? Why is there such higher and rarer materials just all around? This is really neat. I dug up a digging spot in hopes for a useful material, but we got a, something to sell. I then got to work gathering all of the rare ores and materials in this area. I had to build a bit of a bridge, giving us access to the ones in the middle. I realized there was a couple digging spots around this area too. This is great, as these digging spots has a chance to give us an incredible item. I can't wait for that to drop. But, no luck this time. Oh well, there's plenty more to come. Grabbing the last of the ore on the outside, it was time to head on it back into the middle to grab the rest of the stuff. Yeah, we definitely left this place in a better spot than we found it in. Absolutely. With all our newfound resources, it was time to head back home. On the way, we had a waddly boy make his best attempt of trying to hit us. And for some reason, I opened up the map and realized there was a small little area right beside where we just were. So I headed back to investigate. A couple squares over, there was an opening and some light. What was over there? I couldn't resist but to go explore. Breaking my way over to smash a couple crates, I pressed on a tiny bit further as I could still see an opening. And then the music changed. I could hear some different noises, some stuff off in the dis distance, and then the tiles even started changing. What is that over there? I wasn't quite ready to go over there and investigate, but I will happily grab these mushrooms. I'll leave that one <laughs> to its devices and smack this explosive TNT block again. Oh, it was just one, not too big. Some enemies appeared to be having some fun over there. I was honestly quite tempted to build a bridge to grab any form of loot that they may have dropped, but I thought better of it and returned home. On our way home, I was reminded that there's still a glowed tulip over there to go investigate, and I was quite hungry once more. We were also ganked by this mushroom, who was actually able to hit us. But jokes on him, we got a melee point in return. I was also starting to like the feeling of coming home and just having all of our crops ready to be harvested. That was a really great sight to see. Plus, we gathered a bunch more seeds to plant. I ended up mining three iron and three gold ore in that, uh, that special area. The chest that I planned on using for cooked food just became my I'll deal with it later chest, and I started ramming stuff in there. I got to use my copper hoe for the first time, which tills in a 2x2 two two tile, making it a bit easier to grab our stuff. Which meant it was actually time for us to expand our farm to support it. With that done, we had a lot more space to plant and harvest our crops in a very efficient way. I grabbed our seeds and got to planting. I then realized we still needed to expand our farm further as we had more seeds which I happily did. With our freshly planted crops watered, I headed on over to our cooking chest, as we had some glow tulips that I would never use for food for bossing or anything like that, but we could cook them with mushrooms just to raise our hunger, as well as level our cooking skill. That sounded like a good combination to me, so I got to cooking. I trimmed up our crazy bush once more, and figured it was quite some time since we've done any work on the tunnel, so I headed back to get to work. While digging, I got another mining talent, 
That is our third one in efficient excavation now, bringing us up to 6%. A little bit further, we broke into a nether cave system and are greeted immediately with some mushrooms and wood. Happy times. While gathering the materials, I got a running talon point. This brings us up to 15% less food drain when running. Another glow tulip was teasing us off in the distance, but we had a tunnel to dig out. While lining these torches up with the others, I had to do another torch crafting session. And that glow tulip was just irresistible. I had to go explore. Breaking in, I decided to do some ranged combat instead of melee on this guy. So I summoned our bats, brought out our crossbow, and got to pew pewing. I was almost able to defeat him in two cycles just like the copper sword, and he was good enough to drop a shrew man brute figurine. Very cool. Gathering the wood, it led us into a new area, which was a tree surrounded by water. It looked like a bit of an oasis type thing, but I seen an X on that island, and in search for the item I want, I had to go dig it up. I built a bridge across, and got to digging. And to my surprise, I got a mercenary headband and flintlock musket. Look at the damage on this thing. It does 207 to 253. This was an absolute massive upgrade over our wooden crossbow, which does 40 points of damage. The helmet we got also gave a bunch of stats. I kind of wished we got this on the Chester helmet, as we already had a spicy helmet to begin with, but I threw that on a separate equipment set and used our new one. Now, this new weapon that we just got is an absolute monster. It's a beast. We just, we literally just one-shot that guy. That mushroom that took us multiple hits before, this slime, done. He's cooked. Well, we are, we just ascended. Thank you, almighty tree of gifting. We appreciate thee. I noticed some shinies off beside the tree of gifting, so I dug on over to gather them. A few pieces of copper to gather, very nice, but there was more shinies down to the left. I went to go gather them, but we broke into yet another cave system, being immediately greeted with more mushrooms and wood. I was happy to get to gathering. While picking everything up, there was yet another light off in the distance. This game loves giving you things just at the edge of your screen to go off and explore, to keep you going. I decided it was best to try and ignore it for now and continue gathering our resources. Going a little deeper in, we encountered some more wood and a bomb berry plant. This waddly boy thought he could challenge us, but he was no match for our new weapon. Pushing back the darkness a bit more, we discover some stone. A new tile set is over there. It appears we are getting quite far from home. Returning to the other side of the tree of gifting, I gathered some more wood. There was stuff over here to explore. We were challenged once more when we started to hear the thumping again. It appears we were getting close to that once more. As we get insulted by another big rock guy. Can we kill him in two cycles? Nope. No, I think it's gonna be three. I switched our helmets around to give our bats some more time in the light. I figured getting some more skill points for summoning may be a good thing. I dug up another spot in hopes for what we're looking for, but we found a valuable. There were some shinies in the walls, which I happily got to digging, and then returned back to grab the mushrooms and wood. While harvesting the wood, we stumbled upon some wild warden pauldrons. These pauldrons were quite the upgrade over our cur current chess piece. It gives us 33 health, 18 armor, and 5.1% damage by your pet. Unfortunately, we don't have a pet yet, but we are trying to get one. I equipped it, bringing our health to 204, and filled our belly with our food. I then got back to gathering and exploring. Reaching the end of this wood, it sounded like the banging was getting quite close. It seemed like we were on the verge of discovering whatever this thing may be, and we actually broke into some slime. What? What are those, like, those blobs and stuff? And this orange substance on the ground? 
after gathering the last of the materials, I opened up the map to see where we were relative to our base, and I wanted to go see what this thumping was about, so we got in there. Breaking this large blob dropped us some slime and some seeds, and I quickly dispatched this slime for a scrap piece of metal. And then we seen it. The source of the thumping. Is that... is that Glurch? The abominimous mass? With another thud, he agreed and said hello. After that exchange, I got back to clearing the immediate area in hopes for some new materials. And we did actually find something, an apprentice robe. One quick torch crafting session later, we could get back to keeping the darkness at bay. We were also up to 167 wood, which was quite nice to see, and our apprentice robe gave us 9 health, 14 magic barrier, and some magic regen. But we press on exploring. These slimes stood zero chance against our newfound firepower. However, there wasn't much at the end of this tunnel, just one small slime which gave us one slime. Heading back to the main chamber, I could really notice that this the slime on the ground was slowing us down. This may be a problem in the impending boss battle to come. But I continued clearing out the immediate area with our musket. This was proving to be quite the fruitful environment for seeds. Heading on over here, I made quite the discovery. We ended up stumbling upon a waypoint. These things will allow us to travel in between any other waypoints we have discovered giving us a form of fast travel back to base. However, this one wouldn't prove too useful as it was kind of right outside of our base and tunnel. Speaking of tunnel, I had to connect the two. It may not be very useful, but we can still make it look nice by connecting it up. So I got to work opening up the way and evened out the entrance. I then headed back to the waypoint to clear out the area of any danger and lined it up. While gathering some ore in the southern area, I noticed there was another location to the right. With my curiosity peaked, I headed on over. I broke into yet again another cave system. I harvested the nearby crops and smashed some crates. I got challenged by this waddly boy, but he was too slow to the draw. There was a bit of wood and mushrooms to the right of the teleporter, and some glow tulip to the south. Over to the east, there was some ore and wood. After gathering the ore, I realized I was kind of really close to our base. Look at that. <laughs> Heading back down, I wanted to see what was on the other side of this river, so I built a bridge. On the other side of the river, we were immediately greeted to what appeared to be a musical door. Instead of getting distracted with that, I had to grab this wood instead. After grabbing the last of the wood, I headed on to go check out the door. I wanted to grab these crates at the very least. One torch crafting session later. And a crafting talent point, which brings us to 5% extra armor and 12% extra craft chance for some items. Upon breaking in, I realized our inventory was starting to become quite a problem, so I made one space for the fiber that was on the ground, broke the last of the crates, and decided whether or not it was time to return home. Making room for the last item on the ground, I discovered it was actually a lively egg. Our first egg. This made me really want to return back to base to throw it in an incubator. On the way back, I used the new teleporter to get back home. I couldn't wait to find more of these. Upon arriving, our garden was done. So I beat the old bush, pressed this fun button to get rid of half of our inventory, and put a lot more in here. I put down our first statue. I want to try and collect these. I no longer needed our handy crossbow, so I put that away and checked out our cooking pot, which had 12 freshly cooked pieces of food. Speaking of food, we need more to add to the cooking pot, so we got to gardening. Which led to our first gardening skill point. Let's see what that does. 5% chance to gain a seed when harvesting plants. That would have been very useful at the start of this, but we have it nonetheless. I started replanting our seeds for our future harvests, and I quickly ran out of room once more. So, it's time to expand our farm. Seeing all of our hard work lead to a growing farm feels really good. The farm is officially so big, it's starting to enter our tunnel. This is exactly what we wanted. With a sploosh later, our farm is replanted, watered, and ready to grow. I put the copper ore I had gathered up to smelt and crafted an egg incubator for our lively egg. 
I made a tiny bit of room for the incubator over here, as it requires power, and the generator does make a bit of noise, so I just wanted it a little bit out of the way. I put the egg inside and went back to craft said generator. In order to craft the generator, I need an electrical table, which requires 8 wood and 8 copper bars. Thankfully, we have some copper smelting, so let's grab our table, and where do we want to put it? Here's fine. The electricity generator costs 10 copper bars. Unfortunately, we don't have that copper ready, but it is smelting. Having a bit of time to kill, I naturally return to the mine, expanding it a little further. I seem to have a line of torches here somehow, so I think I'll expand that. I dug the other side out by one tile, locked off the cave entrance, and then got to work cleaning up the other side. I figured it was time to make this side look nice. Which broke us into that cave system we just explored, so I had to close that up and block it off. Good enough. My base expanding shenanigans didn't end there, however. I decided to actually just square out the whole room. In doing so, I got my fourth mining point. I'll take that. At some point, I want to try and use this extra space to build our, an actual house to move all of our equipment into. With that done, I had squared out the entire area. It's looking pretty good. I put some more glow tulip up to cook, and then immediately changed my mind as I wanted to prepare some better food instead. Upon cancelling our last order, we got ourselves a cooking point. 5% extra food from cooked food. Very good. By combining a bomb pepper and a heart berry, you make a hearty pepper wrap. This wrap gives you 21% movement speed as well as increasing your max health. This will be our main food source. And thankfully, our farm is in non-stop production of both of these resources. Here's what our food stores are looking like. We've got 19 heart berries and 9 bomb peppers, 11 glow tulips, and 89 mushrooms. Plenty of food. With all that expanding done, our copper bars were almost done. I made the electric generator and gave power to the incubator. Now it can do its thing. With this freshly cooked food, new upgrades, mighty weapon, I figured it was time to go and fight our first boss. But before we do that, I wanted to kind of prepare the boss room, just in case. Fighting my way in, I cleared up some of the walls in the middle. Dug a path up north here, just in case we got chased. While doing so, we got a running talent point. I also made a, another path digging out this way, just in case we got stuck over here. That'll do nicely. Upon making even more space, our pickaxe broke. So, back to base. The farm was almost ready for harvest, just needed a bit more time, but I proceeded to clear out the inventory. Grabbed the rest of our wraps out of the cooking pot, and repaired our pickaxe. Reinforced it even. I was kind of worried to check what was needed to repair or reinforce the flintlock, and it doesn't indeed require tin, which we did not have a lot of. But it was now time to go fight Glurch, the abominous mess. Upon arriving back at the boss room, I made a bit more space. The spiky slimes wanted a scrap, which got me a vitality talent point. Not really knowing what to expect, I decided to dig another pathway through here, just, just in case, if the backup, this is a backup tunnel for the backup tunnel, which made its way all the way back to our waypoint teleporter. I dug some more pathways through here, and one down here towards the southern port of our waypoint. I was not about to be cornered in this fight, apparently. <laughs> this was a bit of over-preparing, but that's okay. While trying to clear out these last couple walls in front of them, the fight had started. Well, it's on. I immediately put our tunnels to use, and as uh, there was no tunnel over there anymore. Glurch, the stompy boy, doesn't really do a whole lot other than jumps to your location trying to land on you, which is quite easy to kite. Especially since we have food giving us 20% movement speed and our feather giving us a little bit of a dash. I, I ran off into our tunnel just to, just to see a little bit of the carnage. Running over here was a bit of a mistake as it kind of broke directly into our waypoint. 
I ended up bringing Glurge down to what seems to be an enraged point. Gaining a summoning level, I continued our kiting, and he was but one more shot away. There it is. We have successfully defeated our first boss. And who's this guy? He is our first vendor. This would prove very useful in the nearby future. Glurge, the good thumpy boy, was nice enough to leave a big two-square chest behind. I lit up the area before investigating. Upon opening the chest, I was met with a plethora of goodies. Look at all this stuff. Our first item, luckily enough, is a ranger hood. That is the exact set we're, we're actually looking for. Our next item was apprentice pants, followed by the Glurch fli <laughs> the fliggerine figurine. I also got my first necklace, followed by some slime and ranger pants. We got two ranger drops from this guy. Glurch also dropped some rare candy, giving one of our pets 500 experience, a Glurch eye, and some slime oil. I believe that Glurch eye was the thing, uh, the trapped thing inside of him. You could actually see it. I immediately equipped our ranger hood and pants, equipped the necklace because it was plus 15 health, so why not? Bringing us up to 237, smacked the chest into our pocket, and returned home. And I think that's where we're going to end episode one. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the content, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.